America. I'm E.G. Marshall. Dostoevsky defines man as a being who can get used to anything. But, he adds, don't ask us how we do it. Perhaps one of the hardest things for us to get used to is also one of the most obvious that we are responsible beings who must accept the consequences of our actions. How hard it is to do that sometimes. Imagine then a situation where you are asked to accept the consequences of an action not of your making. And imagine further that it is a matter of life and death. mystery drama Crossfire was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Russell Horton. The German philosopher Schopenhauer claimed that mankind was doomed to vacillate eternally between the two extremes of distress and boredom. That is an extremely pessimistic view of life. Yet, we must admit it contains a certain amount of truth. The central character in our story is a man named Frank Grove. And one might say that distress and boredom were occupational hazards in his profession. Driving a cab in New York City. As we pick up his story on a fashionable side street in midtown Manhattan, boredom has definitely had the upper hand on the evening. But, as they say, the night is still young. Hello? Hey, hey mister. Mm-hmm. Are, are you taking fares? Uh, oh, uh, sure. H- hop in. Ah. Applaud your ability to sleep in all this traffic. <laughs> That's not too hard to do on a slow night. Uh, you're not from New York, huh? No, Miami. You won't take advantage of me, will you? <laughs> well, not intentionally. Uh, where to? 132 Clarkson Avenue. Uh, Clarkson? That, that's in the Bronx. Yes. In the uh, South Bronx. It's, uh, well, it's not a very safe section of town. Uh, uh, look, I've tried three drivers already, and none of them would take me there. I, I have to be there by 8.30. If, if you won't take me, ju- just say so. No, no, no. Just so long as you know what you're doing, all I have to know is where you're going. <laughs> Uh, ever been up to this area of town before? No. Uh, you can see a lot of the buildings have been burned out and abandoned. Yeah. I, uh, I guess you could say it was instinct. Hey, eh? What What was? Well, my decision to drive you up here. After a while in this line of work, you develop instincts about people. <laughs> you, you have to if you want to avoid trouble. And I struck you as a harmless type? Oh, yeah, you could say it that way. Oh, no offense, meant. I, I won't say it isn't strange, however. I, I mean, I think to myself, I'm not, hey, I'm not trying to pry, but I think to myself, what kind of business could this guy have up here? I pick him up in front of one of the classiest hotels in the city. He's wearing good clothes. Uh, look, isn't that Clarkson Street right up there ahead? Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, sorry, I guess I'm talking too much. Oh, there's 132. Hey. Are you sure you got the right address? That building looks deserted. How much do I owe you? Oh, uh, eight dollars and thirty-five cents. Oh, what, what's, what's the matter? Oh, this is embarrassing. I, I I don't have my wallet. I must have left it at the hotel. You don't have any money on you? No, only some change. Um, look, I mean, uh, Mister, I normally don't do this, but if you want to uh, write out a check, I'll, oh, I'll... Look, just wait here. I'll, I'll get some money from the person I've come to see. Now, listen, it's all right. I'd rather not hang around. <laughs> um, I'll, you, I'll give you a card with my address, and you can mail just it. Just uh, hang on, okay? It'll only take a minute. Hey, mister! Mister! Oh, on a slow night, everything goes wrong. Boy. This area looks the way Berlin must have after the war. Uh, did you, uh, you, you get the money? Okay? Get us out of here, quick. What? Come on, come on. Go, go, go. Move. Oh, what's going on? Take me back to the hotel where you picked me up. Hey, mister, look, there's the matter of my head. Never mind that. Look, look, I got plenty of money. Well, I thought you weren't carrying any cash. Just get going. <laughs>
Well, we're uh, here, mister. This is where I picked you up, the Belleville Hotel. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see, that was 8.35 for the trip up, 8.50 coming back, uh, 16.85 altogether. All right. Here you go. Oh. Hey, this is a $100 bill. I, <laughs> I can't change that. The smallest bill I have. In that whole wad, then, you've got nothing smaller than a hundred? I am sorry. Well, obviously, sixteen eighty-five isn't much to you, but it, uh, to me, it's a lot. Uh, look, I'll wait here while you get change in the hotel, okay? Listen, may I ask you a question? What? This cab, do you, do you own it, or is it part of a fleet? Well, it's mine. I, I own it. Why? So you keep your own hours, right? Yeah. Uh, look, mister... It... Oh, uh, when do you start work tomorrow? Three, three thirty, it depends, whenever I feel like it. All right. Tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock, I want you to drive along 62nd Street between 1st and York. Now, there'll be a man in a long, dark overcoat walking along the south side of the street. You got it? He'll hail you. He'll identify himself as Mr. Meacham. I want you to pick him up and take him wherever he wishes to go. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Uh, look, if you just change that bill... Uh... I'm, I'm not asking this just as a favor. I'm prepared to make it worth your while. Look, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not asking any questions, okay? I, I don't know what's going on, and I don't want to know. I won't change this bill. What? This $100 bill. It's yours. A hundred dollars? The whole thing. And I'll see that my friend Meacham gives you the same. Uh, mister, is this something illegal? Four o'clock tomorrow. Is it a deal? I... Hey, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know what this is. You, you got to understand it from my position. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know what the consequences are. Ignorance is bliss. And in this case, it's also $200. Well, why me? Why does it have to be me? My cab? The question of timing is very important. We have to know there'll be a cab available to Mr. Meacham at precisely 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, but getting a cab in this city isn't hard unless it's raining. Well, then let's just say we're willing to pay $200 so we won't have to worry about the weather tomorrow. Now, no more questions, okay? $100. Is it a deal? And another 100 tomorrow? Yeah. <sighs> okay... It's a deal. Frank? Oh, hi, honey. Why are you home so early tonight? Did you have a fair in the neighborhood? Uh, no. It's only 10 o'clock. Aren't you feeling well? Uh, I, I gotta talk to you, Luz. What's the matter? I just made a hundred dollars. A hundred? Well, how? Oh, that's just it. I, I don't know. I... Pick up this guy in Midtown, right? Yeah. Nice-looking businessman type, well-dressed. I mean, real well-dressed. And he asks me to take him to this address in the South Bronx. We get there, it's an abandoned tenement. And he's got no money. No money? Yeah, to pay for the cab. All I want to do is get out of there, but he insists on going inside to get money to pay me. Now, five seconds later, he runs out, jumps back in the cab, flashes a roll of $100 bills in my face, and tells me to step on it. And he paid you $100? Yeah. And tomorrow, he wants me to drive down a particular street at a certain time and pick up some other guy he says will also give me $100. What for? Just to drive him wherever he wants to go. Oh, wait. You're not going to do it, are you? What is that plan to hurt you? Why? Well, uh, you could identify the man you drove up there, now, couldn't you? Of course. Well, that makes you a witness. Hey, you're right, Luz. You know, I'm going to do what I should have done the minute I walked in the door. Call the police. Oh, no. But they have to know about this. They have to check out that building. No, no, no. no we, we shouldn't get involved. We are already involved, whether we like it or not. I took the guy up there. I accepted this hundred dollar bill. No, Frank. No, please don't call him. Now we have to, Lucy. It's our responsibility as citizens. Uh, operator, uh, get me the police. Well, the officer I spoke to said they'd send up a patrol car right away to that address. I heard you give him our name. Well, of course. Well, what if they find something and they want to ask more questions? If I can be of any help to them, that's what I should do. Well, and, and then, then what? What? If those crooks find out you went to the police, 
So what do you think they'll do? Well, how do you know they're crooks? Oh, Frank, something obviously happened in that building. Okay, but how will they find out I called the police? Look, I just won't go pick up that man. Tomorrow it'll be all over. You'll get another cab, no big deal. And if the police don't find anything wrong up there, I'll get him myself and make us another hundred bucks without having to worry or have a bad conscience, okay? Well, okay. And in any case, we're a hundred dollars richer. Nothing to worry about. Hey, let's get our coats and go down to the Tyrolean Gardens for a late night dinner with some of this money, okay? Well, who could that be at this hour? Frank, Frank, be careful. I'm scared. Ah, now calm down. Uh, yes? Uh, are you Frank Grove? Uh, yes, yes, I am. My name is Gilbert Stokes. This gentleman here is Jim Watson. We're with the police department. You police? Yes, ma'am. Detectives. Plain clothes. Oh. Uh, what, what can I do for you? You are a cab driver, is that right? Yes. You went to 132 Clarkson Street earlier this evening, huh? Yeah. About 8.30 to be exact? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember the time because he was very definite about wanting to get there by exactly 8.30. Uh, who was very definite? Well, the man we're talking about. The man I drove up there. Uh-huh. All right. Let's go, Mr. Grove. Well, um, uh, my wife and I were about to go out to dinner. Do, you, do I have to come all the way down to the station? Yeah, yeah I'd say so. <laughs> but, uh, please don't get me wrong. I want to be all the help to you guys I can, but, uh... Couldn't I just answer whatever questions you got here? You, uh, <clears throat> you don't seem to get it, Mr. Grove. What do you mean? A guy was killed at 132 Clarkson Street tonight, and we're taking you into custody on suspicion of first-degree murder. A good conscience is the best pillow, goes an old proverb. If that is so, then Frank Grove shouldn't have a great deal to worry about. But... Then what is so is not always clear. Who, for example, could have predicted this turn of events? Perhaps Frank Grove is involved in something and just doesn't know about it yet. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Albert Einstein observed that everything is relative, depending on the vantage point from which it is viewed. From our point of view, Frank Grove is an innocent man. At most, he is guilty of taking a hundred dollar bill from someone who might be involved in shady dealings. But from the point of view of the detectives on his doorstep, he is guilty of far more than that. Where does the truth lie? Officer! You're making a mistake. If so, we'll get it straightened out down at the police station. My, now, my husband isn't a murderer. Well, he admits going to the address where the body was found. Is that right? Well, yes, because I had a fare. Some guy asked me to drive him there, but I never even got out of the cab. Uh, this guy you claim you drove. Tell me, where did you pick him up? In Midtown. Where? In front of the Belvoir Hotel. I, I dropped him at the same place. I see. Is he staying there? Well, I couldn't say that for certain. Oh, Frank. Well, I couldn't, really, honey. Not for sure. I mean, I didn't actually see him come out of the hotel or go into it. Do you know his name? Well, why would he tell me his name? I'm just checking, okay? Now, we got to cover all the angles. Uh, what do he look like? Oh, he was very well dressed. Um, silk suit, mm -hmm. good looking shoes, uh, you know, nice Do you think you could identify him if you saw him again? Oh, sure. I got a good look at him under the street light. And after he got back in the cab, he made me so nervous, I, I kept an eye on him in the rear view mirror. Well, why did he make you nervous? Well, one minute he said he didn't have any money. A few seconds later, he comes running out of that building. He had a whole fistful of bills. The, uh, Belvo Hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember. He said he was from out of town. Miami. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You see, Lucy, there's no problem. They're just doing their job. Well, I, I still don't think you should have gotten involved. Involved? Uh, what do you mean? I, I, I just... Don't think he should have called the police at all. Oh, you, uh, called the police? When? Well, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. Isn't that why you're here? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, a patrol car in the area checked it out and radioed us to pick you up. That's all we know. So come on, come on, let's go. You, you're still going to arrest him? Now, Lucy, there's nothing to worry about. I've just got to cooperate with them. They aren't even listening to you. Why don't they go find this man from Miami? Because, Mrs. Grove, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. <laughs> It's, uh, kind of, um, exciting getting arrested when you know you're innocent. Uh, you know, it's a chance to see how you fellas operate. You, uh, think only innocent people get arrested, huh? Oh, no, no, I, I just meant the, uh, hey, hey, where are we going? There's the police station, you just passed it. Yeah, that's right. Where are you taking me? Your wife had a good point, Mr. Grove. We ought to find your passenger. Oh, so you do believe I took someone up there? Oh, of course we do. I don't get it. You don't have to. Who is it? Police. What do you want now? Mrs. Grove? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Thompson, Homicide Division. Here's my ID. Well? I'd uh, like to speak to your husband. <sighs> Yeah, if you want to speak to my husband, what are you doing here? Uh, excuse me, this is the home of Frank Grove, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he drives a cab by profession? Yeah. Okay. How many times have we got to go through this? Well, I'm sorry, maybe your husband didn't tell you, but he called in this evening with a lead on some uh, possible trouble in an <sighs> uptown address. Well, now, no kidding. Well, we checked it out. He was right. We found a body. A man was murdered, and we'd like to get some further details from your husband about the passenger he said he drove up there. Well, then why don't you just turn around and go back to the police headquarters? I beg your pardon? Well, that's where your men have taken him. My men? <sighs> Two plainclothes detectives were here not 15 minutes ago. And they, they took your husband? They arrested him. On what charge? They claim he murdered that man. Uh, Mrs. Grove, the, these two men, did you see their identification? Well, they, they didn't show us any. Why? I said, did they give their names? Yeah. Uh, uh, Gilbert Stokes and something Watson. I didn't get his first name. Mrs. Grove, I don't know who those two men were, but uh, they were not police. There's no one in our division by those names. They weren't the police? Well, then who were they? And, and how did they know Frank went to that address tonight? Uh, this is the place? The uh, Belvoir Hotel, yeah. I picked them up right out in front. Now, But I cannot say for a fact that he was staying here. I mean, he never actually uh, yeah. said... All right, he... all right, all right, all right, all right. We'll check it out. Hey... Uh, Watson. Yes, boss? You'd better go back out and stay with the car. It's in a no-parking zone. Uh, you mean you guys have to worry about getting tickets? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Well, I'll do my best, officer, but uh, this is a big hotel. I, I don't even know this guy's name. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, yes, may I help you? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, looking for someone who might be staying here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Grove? You're on. Ah, uh, Yes. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a man. Um, he's about six feet tall. Uh, perhaps if you just told me his name. Uh, I don't know his name. I'm sorry. Um, oh. But he was a very distinguished-looking guy. We uh, have a lot of people staying with us, and we uh, specialize in distinguished-looking people. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, oh, he was from Miami. He told me that. Oh, all right. I suppose I can look down our register here. Um... Uh, uh, I, I only see one guest from Miami, um, Mr. Langston. Langston? Mm -hmm. uh, Frederick Langston? I yeah, checked in earlier today. Uh, fine-boned, uh, broad-shouldered, about 45, uh, a, a bit gray at the uh, temples. Sir, or... uh, I do not examine every guest. Wearing a dark green silk suit? Langston? Oh, yes. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, what room is he in? Oh, a room 212, uh, but you won't find him in. Why not? Well, 
He was taken away about a half an hour ago by the police. Get in, Grove. You find him, boss? Ah, uh, the police got him. The police? What for? I don't know. But look, uh, can't we just go down to the station and get this all cleared up? You shut up, Grove. Yeah, but if the man we're looking for is already in custody... Forget but... it, all right? Oh, sure, I'm sorry. I guess you fellas know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Peter. What? Go on home. Well, I thought I was under arrest. Yeah, we, uh, we don't need you anymore. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, maybe I could still help you. How? This, uh, Mr. Langston asked me to pick somebody up tomorrow afternoon. Oh. Somebody named Meacham. Uh, does that name mean anything to you? Uh, wh- wh- where are you picking him up, huh? Oh, on, uh, 62nd Street between York and 1st at 4 o'clock. And then what? Well, I'm just supposed to take him somewhere, but I don't know where. Langston said Meacham would tell me once he was in the cab. Langston gave me a hundred dollars, which I guess I should have told you right away. I didn't mean to withhold evidence, but... Uh, uh, Will you just forget it? Just keep the money. Uh-huh. This gives us a second chance, don't it, Watson? Yeah, if we know where Meacham's going to be tomorrow. No, no, no. No, no. He wouldn't cooperate with us. We'll, uh, we'll let Mr. Grove here pick him up and lead us right to what we're after. Hey, we can't let him go. Remember, he said he called the cops. Shut up. The cops will have been to his house by now. His wife will have figured out what's going on. Uh, hey, uh, what is going on? Uh, just relax, Grove. Hey, you guys aren't cops at all, are you? Who are you? How did you know that I was the cab driver who drove that man up the Clarkson Street? How do you think? You, you must have been there. You got my cab number and then got my name and address from the dispatcher. You were inside that house. You were the guys Mr. Langston ran out to get away from, but... But then... You... You must be the guys that murdered that man. That's right, Mr. Grove. Uh... What are you gonna do with me? <clears throat> we're gonna let you go. Hey, stop! Shut up, Watson. Mr. Grove here isn't going to go to the police. Are you, Mr. Grove? I... I, uh... I just bear with me for a minute, Mr. Grove. I'm going to paint a picture for you. Now, Watson and I are what you might call agents. We work for what you might call a uh, corporation. You mean organized crime? A corporation, Mr. Grove. All right? Now, we are after something, and you're going to help lead us to it by picking Meacham up tomorrow. And every time you have the itch to call the cops, just remember, we're just a couple of small chips on a very large iceberg. Frank? Oh, Frank, you're home. Are you all right? Uh, yeah, the, uh... The two detectives that arrested me, they realized they'd made a mistake, so they let me go. Oh, you don't need to lie, Frank. I know the truth. What? I know those two men weren't police. A real detective was here about, about an hour ago. Oh, I thought I might never see you alive again. How, how did you escape from them? Well, they let me go. Oh, thank the Lord it's over. No, it's not. It would be if I hadn't opened my big, helpful mouth before I realized they weren't cops. See, I told them about this guy Meacham I'm supposed to pick up tomorrow. So now they're going to shadow me until they get what they're after. Well, what are they after? I don't know. Oh, this poor Meacham. What do you think they'll do to him? Oh, it doesn't matter. They're all a bunch of crooks. Well, now, how do you know that? Because the police, the real police, have taken Langston into custody. Langston? Oh, yeah, that's the guy I drove up to Clarkson Street in the first place, the start of all this trouble. When we got to the Belleville Hotel, the desk clerk told us the cops had just been there and taken him away. Obviously, I've gotten caught in a crossfire between two gangs. Langston must have been on his way to make a connection with the man Stokes and Watson murdered. He realized something had gone wrong and ducked out before they got him, too. Frank, I'm scared. 
I, are you going to call the police again? No. No, I have had it being good citizen Frank. I'm going to pick up Meacham, take him wherever he wants to go, let him out, and get away as fast as I can. And let the lot of them fight it out over whatever it is they're after. Morning, dear. Oh, morning, Luce. I got breakfast on. Oh, here's the morning paper. Oh, I- I'll take the vacuum out and clean the cab while the eggs are cooking. Yeah. Okay. And don't you get so wrapped up in the paper you forget to keep an eye on the stove. Mm, mm. Frank? Frank? Huh? Uh, oh, oh, did the eggs burn? Look. Look what I found in the cab. A velvet pouch. Where was it? Stuffed down behind the back seat. Mm. One of my customers must have dropped it. Oh, look what's inside. Diamonds? Diamonds? There must be dozens of them here. Look at the size. Honey, these must be worth a fortune. What people are ashamed of usually makes a good story, says a character in one of F. Scott Fitzgerald's novels. And by the same token... What people try to hide can also make an interesting tale. Is it safe to assume that we have finally discovered the object of all the mystery? If so, Frank may not be as close to extricating himself from his unwilling involvement as he had thought. Of course, the big question is, what will he do? We'll find out when I return with Act Three. Respond to things is a fairly accurate yardstick for measuring who we are. Frank Grove has already demonstrated that by nature he is a law abiding citizen, ready and willing to be as helpful to the authorities as he can. Lucy, his wife, has been somewhat less civic minded, but then she may have something else on her mind, like staying alive. Diamond. Look, Lucy, look how they catch the morning light, how they reflect the sun. (laughs) Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Frank, how did those diamonds get into your cab? Of course. This must be it. This must be what all those guys are after. Are you sure? I mean, couldn't someone have just dropped this by accident? No, Langston was the only fare I took last night. It had to be him. But... But you said he didn't even have any money on him until after he came out of that building. Well, I don't know. Maybe he just said that so I'd be forced to wait for him. I never would have hung around that neighborhood otherwise, and he'd never have found another cab there, especially at night. So, these are what he was taking up there to deliver to that man who was murdered. Then they must have slipped out of his pocket while you were driving him back to his hotel. And now he's been arrested. You know something? I don't think he dropped them, Lucy. Why not? Well, this pouch is too bulky to have slipped down behind the seat by itself. You, you mean you think he left them in your cab on purpose? Yeah. And I think that's why I'm picking up this fellow Meacham this afternoon, so he can retrieve them. Langston must have suspected the police were on to him. That must be it. It had nothing to do with where I was supposed to take Meacham at all. The only thing that counted was that it was my cab he got into. And that's why it was worth $200 to him. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Maybe we should call the police again. Well, you can't. Not now. Not if Meacham knows you have these. I mean, you have to deliver them. But it's stolen property, Lucy. It doesn't belong to them. Well, we don't know that. Not for certain. Well, it has to be. I mean, why else was Langston acting so furtively? Why, why else would the police arrest him? I, I don't think I have any choice. Well, think what Meacham will do if he doesn't find them. Honey, we have got to do what's right. One man has already been killed, Frank. Look, uh, let him pick up the diamonds and, and let us get out of this nightmare. But what if that isn't the end of it? 
I mean, how do I know I'll be safe after Meacham has the diamonds? What if he has orders to kill me anyway? Why? Well, what's the phrase they always use in the movies? Uh, 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 I know too much. I can identify Langston. I can identify Meacham. Honey, these are desperate men. The police are obviously on to them. One side's already shown they're ready to kill for these little pieces of rock. Why not the other? It's not fair. It's not right that you should have gotten caught up in this. But the fact is, I have. I have got to go to the police. At, at, at least they can protect us. Oh, from two mobs? How? Now, how are they going to protect us? Well, I don't know. One side knows I have the diamonds, is expecting me to deliver them. The other side doesn't know I have them, but is watching every move I make. Oh, maybe you're right. The least of all the evils is to put them back behind the seat where you found them, let Meacham pick them up, and just hope I'll be safe. I just hate the idea of helping that scum. I know you do, dear, but, but it's not your fault. I mean, you can't help it. Well, that doesn't matter. It's still breaking the law. Look, you, you were ready to do it last night. I, I'll just pick Meacham up and take him wherever he wants to go, now you said. It was easier when I didn't know exactly what it was I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. Well, at least we got a hundred bucks out of it. Oh. No. What? The eggs. They're burnt. I'm not hungry. Breakfast is ruined. Who cares? I do. Oh, Frank. Frank, I'm so frightened. Hey, hey, hey. Lucy. <laughs> now, I'll be okay. Hey. What's this? What? Well, this picture in the morning paper. It, it's him. Who? Langston. The man I took up to Clarkson Street last night. Hmm? Well, there's a whole article on him. Noted businessman seeks asylum. Businessman? Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, Frederick Langston, highly respected jeweler, has voluntarily placed himself in police custody prior to oh. testimony he intends to give later this week to a grand jury. A, a grand jury investigating mob infiltration into the jewelry business. Are you sure this is the same man? Yeah. Yeah, it says he's from Miami. Well, that's where this guy was from. And the picture, I recognized him right off. Oh, but if he's a businessman... It says here he has uh, documented evidence of such infiltration. That honest businessmen have had to conduct large-scale transactions in secret. And that even so, a number of jewelry dealers have been murdered. The man in that building in the Bronx. Yeah. So Meacham must have been a colleague of his. Yeah. Well, I've got nothing to worry about. Except. What? Well, I can't take these diamonds to him now. Stokes and Watson will be right behind me. Meacham will be robbed. Or worse. But if you don't... Lucy, those guys are murderers. <gasps> Who's that? Well, quick, get these diamonds out of sight. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, yes? Uh, Mr. Grove? Ah, uh, yes. I'm, uh, I'm Detective Lieutenant Thompson with the uh, police department. Oh. I was here uh, yesterday. Uh, didn't your wife tell you? Oh, uh, yes. yes well, uh, she said you were abducted by uh, two men uh, posing as police detectives. Uh, I, I was, yes. Uh, two men probably connected in some way with the uh, dead man we discovered up in the Bronx. In response, uh, I might remind you to your phone call. Um, yeah. Well, um, excuse me, they, they let you go or did you escape? Huh? They, uh, uh, let me go. You all right? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Well, why didn't you call us? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I only just got home. Uh, oh, see, well, I uh, came by to speak to your wife to see if she'd uh, had any word from you. Uh, you may have seen it in the morning paper that a Mr. Langston has sought police protection. Yes. Hmm. That was the man you drove up to the Clarkson Street address? Yes, it was. And the uh, two men, the ones who abducted you? Oh, I, I think they're the men you're after. I mean, I think they're the murderers. Uh, they, they wanted me to take them to the hotel where I dropped Langston off. Well, obviously, we have to find them. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, can you tell me anything about them? What kind of car they were driving? Uh, well, it was dark. I, I didn't notice. Well, uh, did they drop any clues about where they might be? No. Uh, when they found that Mr. Langston had been taken away by the police, they just uh, let me go. And they said nothing? Only that I wasn't any more used to them. I see. Well, thank you. I, uh, I hope you don't think I'm withholding evidence. No, no, no. I'm sure you're being of all the help you can be. Uh, good day, Mr. Grove. Mm. Thank you, Frank. I'm a coward. No, no, you're not. I should have told him the whole truth. Why? It's none of our business. No, honey, an innocent man might get hurt. But we never asked to get involved. Oh, innocent? They're no more innocent than those crooks. Using you for their business transactions, off which they'll turn a very nice profit. Thank you very much. Langston had no right to involve you this way, against your knowledge. You could have been hurt. You still can be. I know. I'll just put the diamonds back in the cab. Taxi! Taxi! Uh, are, are you Mr. Meacham? Yes. May I get in? Uh, sure. Oh, you're right on time, thanks. Uh, your uh, friend last night said I was supposed to take you somewhere. Yes. Just start driving, if you would, please. I'll give you directions in a moment. <laughs> Suppose you're wondering what this is all about. Well, Mr. Langston said I wasn't supposed to ask any questions. How did you know his name? What? Has something gone wrong? Oh, uh, no, no, I, I saw it in the morning paper. Oh, <laughs> so, so you know what business we're in anyway. Why, we're having to be so cloak and dagger, as it were. Mm -hmm. Um, where to? Uh, pardon? Uh, where am I supposed to take you? Oh, well, as it turns out, it doesn't really matter. Uh, right around this corner here will be fine. Well, are you sure we're off the main avenue here? Isn't that all right? Well, sure, it's just that there's not very many people on these side streets. No, but I don't see what difference that makes. Now, I believe the price you agreed upon with my colleague was $200? Uh, well, uh, was it more? Uh, oh, no, no, 200 Of which you've already been paid 100 is that right? Yeah. Well, then, here's the other 100 Mr. Grove. Uh, how, how did you know my name? Well, that's what it says on your taxi license there on the dashboard. Oh, yeah. Uh, look here. Are you sure everything's all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Here's your money. Uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Wait. Wait. Uh, that, uh, uh, don't get out. Shut the door. What's the matter? We're being followed. By whom? The two men who murdered that guy last night up on Clarkson Street. The one Mr. Langston was supposed to meet. Well, that was Mr. Glover, my partner. Look here, are you sure we're being followed? How do you know? Now, it's too long to try and explain now, but I know what's going on, Mr. Meacham. My wife discovered the diamonds, the ones you just picked up. Do you know which car it is that's following us? The, uh, white sedan behind us on the corner. Oh, what can we do? If I get out of this cab now, I'm a dead man. They threatened me if I tried to double-cross them. That, that's why I had to pick you up. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Grove. The problem was ours. We never should have gotten you involved. Now, listen. Um, I can put a call in to our dispatcher from the cab here and have him notify the no, police. No, 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 no. You, you've taken enough risks already. Besides, it's too late. Look, they're getting out of their car. They're coming toward us. Is there anything we can do? Uh, nothing. This is a dead-end street. I'll give them the diamonds, Mr. Grove. Hope that'll satisfy them. Grove? Uh, What's going on here? You two having some kind of powwow? Uh... Uh, no, no. Is this me, Jim? Please, I, I know what it is you're after. If I give them to you, will you let us go? Well, of course. Well, then, here they are. And if they're cut properly, there should be a quarter of a million dollars worth of diamonds there. Hey, thanks. Well, that was easy. Hey, Watson? Uh, do you have the silencer on your gun? You, you said you wouldn't harm us. Did I? Well, I'm sorry I don't remember. Watson? Hey, What's that? Cops coming down the street. Quick, get back to the car. They cut us off. We're trapped. Drop it. Drop the gun. Hold it right there, the both of you.
Lucy? Frank? Yeah. Oh, Frank. Are, are, are you all right? Did the police get there in time? Ooh, just barely. Lieutenant Thompson said it was you who called them, right? Yeah. I, uh, I told him where you were meeting Mr. Meacham. Boy, you saved our lives. Honey, what, what made you change your mind? Oh, well, uh, after you left, I, I read the newspaper article on, on Mr. Langston again. And I thought, if he's not afraid to, to testify against those mobsters, then, then we shouldn't be afraid either. Mm. Lieutenant Thompson told me that Langston's testimony will create enough publicity that we won't have to fear reprisals. Hmm? Hey, what's this? What? How come you're all dressed up? Oh, <laughs> well, in case you've forgotten, you, uh, you asked me to go out to dinner last night. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, maybe it'll all come back to me, um... While I'm changing into my suit. <laughs> our actions, even our best deeds, are rarely heroic. But then, so often the situations in which we find ourselves are complex and enigmatic. The lines between right and wrong are clouded and uncertain. Except in retrospect. Perhaps the one general statement we can make about ethics is that a good person is one who will stumble more often into the right than the wrong. I shall return in a moment with a final word. To know what is right and to be afraid and yet to act upon your knowledge, that is the mark of a great person. So wrote the French man of letters, André Gide. It is interesting to realize that as Frank and Lucy Grove struggled with the dilemma that confronted them, not once did either suggest they simply take the diamonds for themselves. How many of you can say that thought never crossed your mind either? Our cast included Russell Horton, Ann Williams, Court Benson, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.